Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Um, Corey here from the Ugly Bug Fly Shop and Crazy Rainbow Fly Fishing. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie a rusty trombone. Um, we get a lot of questions about uh, how to tie the rusty trombone. So we thought it would be a good idea um, to make an instructional video so you guys get on there and, and tie one of our most productive streamer patterns that we have out here on the North Platte. Um, originally this was tied by Trent Tatum, um, but we're going to show you guys how to do it. So first thing I got, um, I believe the original hook used was the Dairiki 700, which is a 3x long down eye streamer hook. Uh, for our, for us today, we're gonna go ahead and use this uh, Firehole 839 size six. These are a um, a 3x long, 2x heavy, um, very heavy wire streamer hook that is barbless. Um, incredible hook. Um, but yeah, here we go. So first thing we're going to do, I'm actually using some Vivas 140. Um, you guys can use anything that you choose. Definitely go a little heavier on these. You know, you can even probably get away with using 210 or something like that. I just prefer to use uh, Vivas in the Schmann bobbin. So first thing we're going to do, lay down a nice thread base here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get a nice thread base down. Bring it all the way back to right before the bend of the hook starts. And then what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and tie in some marabou. I'm really picky about the marabou. I like to find the tougher, you know, they have a, a much thicker quill. And they have a lot more poof to them. And uh, what I like to do, I like to get it about the length of the shank of the hook. Right to the back there. I'll pinch where I want it to tie in and I'll set it on there. It's always a good idea to put a couple of few nice loose wraps in here and then get tighter as you go so you're not fighting it sliding around the hook a whole bunch. I'm going to go ahead and tie this marabou all the way forward to add just a little bit of body to it. And I'm pulling up on it and what that does, I kind of pull it away and let, lets me wrap my uh, thread around it without it getting in the way too much. Right, snip that clean and just wrap right back on it here. Um, next material we're going to use in this, uh, on, this, on the rusty trombone is copper flashaboo. We're going to go ahead and throw a couple strands on each side of the shank of the hook and cut it about the same length as our tail here. Lock it down. And then come up here, cut it about the length of our marabou tail. Same on this side. Just kind of get this stuff wrapped in here. Kind of pull it. Get it where you need to. And just lock it right down. You know, set that aside because we're going to use that a few more times throughout the process here. Kind of give it, I like to just go back over it one real good time here. Now what we're going to use next, UV Polar Chenille and Copper. This is the medium size. This is going to create the, the body of our streamer here. And give it the flash. Just going to kind of lock that down. Set it out of your way. And then we're going to do some olive hackle here. I like to try to keep it, our hackle size, about the gap of your hook. Kind of a good reference point. A little bigger, a little smaller won't ever hurt anything. Just kind of a good rule of thumb. I'm going to tie that in here. Just going to lock it down nice. Bring my thread all the way forward. First thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and wrap our UV polar chenille forward. Now each wrap I take, I like to reach up and pull these fibers back and lay the next wrap right in front of the other one. Um, it's not going to kill you if you leave a little space in there, but if you wrap it right on top, it tends to force those polar fibers backwards. And that's kind of what you want. You want this fly to look like it's sweeping backwards, the streamer here. Go one right on top of the other. And when I come down into here, 
I try to leave myself a little bit of room, lock it down, pull it back, get it nice and locked in there. You don't want to think a lot of mistakes people make when they do these articulated streamers. They always end up crowding um, the eye of the hook here. All right. I always like to kind of pull these. I call them fluffing them, fluff them out. And then as you're kind of wrapping this guy, you want to put quite a few, the original pattern's tied with quite a few heavy wraps here. But I like to fluff out this polar chenille as I'm wrapping it, as to keep it from locking a lot of the polar chenille fibers down. And when I get up to the front, I always like to throw a few extra wraps in there. And then I'll actually, I'll get it and I'll lock it right down. There we go. Mm -hmm. Kind of pull some things back. I like to build just a tiny little black head. Trim some of these errant fibers you get. And whip finish. And just for the sake of security, I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of brush on zap a gap here. There we go. Kind of make it a little secure. Get it all over my finger to force it into the threads. We're going to go ahead and remove this. This is going to be the rear section of the articulated rusty trombone. Next, I'm going to take some 30 pound heavy duty saltwater backing. 20 pounds fine. Um, I just like to go a little heavier if I can and we're going to thread this through the eye of the hook. Get it in here. Sometimes licking it definitely helps you be able to force it through there. Do to do. Or maybe easier if I came up from the bottom. Alright, what we're going to do starts to give you a little bit of problems. We're going to cut ourselves a nice new piece. So what happens is they start to flare when you try to string it. There you go. Right through there. Now I'm going to set this aside for a quick second. I'm going to take a number one of my 839 size 6 down eye streamer hook from Firehole and I'm going to put a brass cone head on the top of it, a large one. Get it locked down in my vise here. Now what I like to do with the backing is I like to string my backing both through the eye of the hook and back around. It just adds a little bit of uh, makes it a little bit bulletproof, kind of helps it keep from pulling through if you get a big fish and I like to just kind of throw a little thread base down real quick nothing perfect get these two together so I like to take my backing pieces I cut these a little long and get the ends of them as close together as I can and sometimes I'll just take them snip them flush wet them a little bit and cut the fibers off. This stuff's pretty tough. It doesn't like to cut. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through the cone. We're going to go through the eye of the hook. And then we're going to pull our cone up here and go back through the cone. Do, 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 do. And did it. Possibly, almost. One more to feed in there. Mm -hmm. There it is. Perfect. Cool. Real nice thing about this Stonfo vise, it's it's really great because I can kind of set it in here, kind of get my length situated. I like to do about a bead gap 
of space between the two which will allow it to still have plenty of movement I think if you go a little bit too far it's not going to kill you and then I really lock these my Dacron backing down come back here a little further Palmer up again just to lock it down as best I can bring it right back next material we're gonna put another tuft of marabou on it here and then that's gonna make our uh, make our tail of this guy and I like to get the tail about just to the beginning of the marabou on your rear tail we'll set it on there couple loose wraps and then get tight really lock it down and I'm gonna bring this all the way forward create a little bit of body on this guy tuck it under the bead a little bit under the cone snip it flush all right. palmer this all the way to the back again we're going to take that polar, that copper flashaboo that we set aside, and we're going to tie a couple into the back here. Cut it about the same length as your marabou. Either side of the shank of the hook. There we go. And kind of cut, set that down to the side again. We're going to use it one more time. All right, next is again some UV polar chenille and medium copper. It's going to go on first. I'll just throw some wraps in there to kind of get it in place, lock it down a little bit. Next, we're going to grab another thing of olive hackle here. Like I said earlier, I like to keep it about the same size of the shank of the hook. Also I like to use my thumb and my middle finger, my nail, to pull these fibers off. Get yourself about a quarter inch and snip it. it gives you a perfect tie-in point. And I like to really like these guys down because they have a tendency to pull out if you're a little, a little aggressive with them. Bring your thread all the way forward. We're going to go ahead and wrap our polar chenille back back to the front and as we wrap pull these fibers backwards force them to lay backwards all right mm -hmm. just keep wrapping it right on top of each other all right and I'm going to put a couple extra wraps right underneath the cone head here and lock it down okay got flush now we're going to do the same thing we're going to wrap our hackle forward fluffing this as we go and what that's going to do is it's going to kind of keep you from locking down a lot of your fibers if you do put a wrap in there and you notice you got a lot of fibers locked down you can kind of back it up and reflush fluff the polar chenille. We don't need a whole crazy amount of wraps, just enough to get us up front. Do do do. And go ahead and lock this guy down. Okay. Cut this guy off here. We're gonna add one more tuft of strong marabou and I like to make this not quite the entire length but just short from our marabou tail from our front hook here and then we're just gonna tie it right in you can kind of lock this stuff down right away here just lock it right down and kind of pull these apart sometimes it actually helps if you wet these a little bit I'm going to reach in here and cut this as close as you can. A couple 
couple locking wraps. Really lock that stuff down. There we go. Perfect. One more piece of olive hackle. Strip it. Cut it. A little trick here too is if you wrap it over the top and leave yourself a lot of room, you can actually fold it over and lock over the top of it and cut the piece that sticks out. What that'll do is it'll make sure if you start pulling on this thing you don't yank it out and then get all frustrated because you have to retie it in. And when I tie this in you want to go way up into the front of the hook here under the, under the bead. The bead will actually kind of force them to lay backwards or lock it down. Mm -hmm. Throw a couple extra wraps in there Tied that sucker all the way up in there, just a little end to cut off. Okay, pull wraps and a whip finish. And there you have it the rusty trombone, an awesome streamer pattern for here for us here on the North Platte. Work good, work well anywhere. And there it is.